you have a man bag, a Merce, a fanny pack, whatever it is. Surprise, we're in Wisconsin. Oh. up here to help a buddy of ours paint the inside of this bank and we're hoping that we have a few days of downtime later and we did get some downtime we have been here for two days no three days three days we painted at the bank for two full days and today we are taking some time off to go sightsee we uh have some explaining to do first we usually use a gimbal with this camera, which makes everything look a little more steady. We brought the gimbal, but somewhere along the way, we lost the little screw that screws this camera onto the gimbal. So everything is going to be handheld uh, for this vlog. And I'd like to apologize because it's going to be shaky as crap and I hate it, but we'll make it work. We wanted to shoot it anyways. It The place that we're going, we're going to the Black Point Estate. It is the summer home of Beer Baron Conrad Sipe. Uh, we have to take a boat to get there. We are in Williams Bay area and we're at Lake Geneva. So um, it's very fancy. It's very pretty. <laughs> it's beautiful here. The leaves are just starting to change. Um, this was one of the first things that we saw when we looked up things to do in the area. It looks phenomenal. We're going to go check it out. This is the Riviera, and this is where we check in and go get our boat tickets, and we will then go get on one of the many boats. We made it! The first estate built on Geneva Lake in 1870 was called Maple Lawn, and it was built for Shelton Sturgis, brother of George, and with their other brother Buckingham, were in the great storage business that was handed down to them from their father. We're now passing Geneva Manor subdivision that was established and subdivided in 1926. It's on 37 acres of shoreline land that was originally called Linden Lodge, built in 1879. Now these homes, when they were built in that era of elegance, did not have indoor plumbing as far as sewers. They had water, but no sewers. So they either had chambermaids to take the pots out to the, set, to the uh, outhouse, or you travel to the outhouse yourself. The first home from the Golden Era is still standing is on your right, the red roof and the red chimneys. It's called Black Toft. It was built in 1881 for John Lester, who was a member, a prominent member of the Chicago Board of Trade. amazing i have never seen so much immense wealth accumulated along one shoreline in my life the walk up to the house is a bunch of steps to be prepared it's beautiful tour's about to start as they told you already this was the summer home of conrad site he was born in germany 1825 and at the age of about 25 years old he came here to the united states obviously first through New York, and then to a small community down here in Illinois by the name of Lyons, Illinois. Well, little did he know what he's going to be doing as far as an occupation in his life, but his first job down there was driving a beer wagon for Miller Brothers Brewery. There was a young lady that came here from Germany. Her name was Maria. 
Conrad and Maria were married, and with Maria, he has six children. Conrad grew in wealth in a huge, huge hurry. One of the reasons, not the main reason, but one of the reasons was 1871. Chicago Fire. He was so far south in South Chicago that when the fire went through, it took out all of his competition, but he was left alone. I don't want you to go home thinking that he grew in wealth by accident, a Chicago fire type thing. He really had a brilliant mind for business. Before we start, do any of you know how to play the piano? Yes. Okay, good deal. Now, for real, it's four chords. So okay, okay, it's okay. Do you want me to be talking while she... Oh, I don't care. Yeah, you're good. That's the embarrassment of mom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 There is so much history that we could sit and try to fill you in on. I can't remember it all. It was amazing. But what's really cool is this. So about five years ago, they had one of the great, great, great granddaughters of Conrad Seip came to visit. And during the tour, or maybe after she pulled the tour guide aside, and she said, you know, I have my great, great, great granddad's beer recipe. Wouldn't it be cool? if we could brew it. And they were like, yes. And the thing that's really, really cool about this beer is that the brewery actually went out of business one month before prohibition was lifted. So the recipe for this beer is pre-prohibition. It is the original, hasn't been changed. And I'm excited to taste the difference of a Pilsner from the early 1900s rather than a Pilsner of today. Very excited. We'll fill you in on how it tastes. Okay, one more thing I wanted to mention. The other really cool thing about this house is that everything in it is original to the family. It's from the early 1860s. When the family gave it to the state, their big draw of making it a museum that you'd have to travel out to by boat is that every single thing in it is original. They didn't take a thing out, they just handed the keys over and said it's yours. So we just got done with the tour. It was really cool because we got to get in a boat and they took us all the way around the lake, not all the way, but like halfway, halfway around, around around the lake. And they also pointed out a bunch of the uh, homes, all the historic houses, and then also some of the history of the area. And like most of the places out here are people from Chicago mm -hmm. that come down and this is like their summer home. Their summer home. That is huge. Uh, and then we got to the actual place that we were going. Yeah, and so then they let you off the boat there, and you get a couple of hours, um, a guided tour through the house. It's a three-story house. You get to go through two stories, and then they give you the history on the Sipe family. Sipe? Stipe? Stipe. Stipe? Where's that beer? Sipe. <laughs> It's Seip. So um, Conrad Seip was a German immigrant. He came to America when he was 25. Uh, within 14 years, he opened a brewery. That brewery did phenomenally well. Um, in 
part, he, he kind of had the best of both worlds. He was a very, very smart man. And then when Chicago burned to the ground, he was a little bit farther south. And he was fine, but all of his competition was taken out. So um, he had a, a leg up in a sense. He was a very, very smart, frugal businessman. He grew his brewery very, very quickly. Um, and then... Prohibition. Prohibition happened. And like many breweries, they switched to soda. Um, but they were saying it was 30 days to the day from the end of Prohibition, company folded. Mm-hmm. Belly up, bankrupt, gone. And then 30 days later, Prohibition was over. Surprise, surprise. So um, that's a bit of an unfortunate story for that part of the family history. Mm-hmm. The house was really cool. Mm-hmm. The cool thing about it was really the fact that the house was left exactly as it was when the family gave it to the state. One of the agreements was is they would leave it with everything that was in it because that way it would be exactly as it is. Most historical places you go, they've been cleared out by the family wanting to like take family heirlooms mm-hmm. or things that they remember. And so it's rare to go to a place where it's like, this is the original furniture. This is the original pictures. These are the original mirrors. These are the Everything. original tiles. Everything. I've never seen anything all like that. All the family photos are still there. From all Everything. The, from all the places that we've ever been that have been like historical buildings. It's always like, here's a representation of what it could have looked like. like. And they buy things around the same year. We had a very knowledgeable guide. He was very, very nice. Um, I got to play a piano, which was terrifying. She, the, the, guy, the amount of which I was shaking when I sat down at that thing. The, I get nervous when I have to perform for people. And then not to mention, I don't know how much that piano costs. That guy, the guy was like, does anybody here know how to play the piano? And Lydia just kind of said, a little bit. A little bit. I know how to play no like, a song. no one else said anything. And then we got to volunteer her. Terrifying. She did a great job. It sounded beautiful. I did, so. okay. But it was really cool to get to see the entire house. And then we also learned, as I said earlier, about the comeback of the Sipe beer. Yeah, and we've got a six-pack of it, and we're going to try it probably yeah. next couple days. Or um, we'll let you guys know. And then the cool thing about it that they were saying is, like, breweries that made it through Prohibition have been changing their recipe a little bit here, a little tweak there, a little bit there, from the 1930s onward. So you have... a beer that has been produced for almost a hundred years, but it doesn't taste the same as day one. And so this is kind of cool because it is a pre prohibition recipe unchanged through the cent- or through the decades. And so that's kind of a just a neat, weird little quirky thing to get to try. So after we were done with the house tour we went back down to the boat and they took us around the other side of the lake. So we have yep. gone almost I think pretty much all the way around the lake. Yeah, I Again, think it's like thirty to forty five minutes out and then thirty, forty five minutes back. Again, it just takes us around and it like shows us all the historical buildings and all the history behind it. And there's mm. some crazy, crazy things amount, like just crazy amount of wealth going on. The in this amount place. of money on the shores of this lake is impressive. <laughs> like I cannot even, it's so much. We just got dropped off by the boat, and now we're back in Lake Geneva. We came back to the car to drop the beer off because we're going to go into town and try to find something to eat. It is four thirty. We have had nothing to eat today, and All we're day. starving. All day. All we day. Had, I think we had <laughs> little like a little cookie. We each had a tiny cookie this morning before we left the house. Um, but honestly, I haven't really noticed. We had such a big meal last night, yes, and then did. like today, because we've been so busy, I, I haven't really noticed. Also, I would love to say that this vacation is sponsored by our friend Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. He flew us up here to Wisconsin to help him paint his bank building that he bought uh, we've been painting for two days, and then today he said, go out, enjoy yourselves. He bought our tickets to this tour. They are a little bit on the pricey side. We're going to pause here. I think our battery's going to die. Be back in a sec. Anyways, as we were saying, big shout out to Jeff. Um, he has put us up for the last couple of days. We've worked a little bit, I feel like, and then he so graciously splurged for us to go on this tour today. Uh, the tickets are a little on the pricier side. We were going to go on our own as it was. Um, I think it's really worth it because historical places like this need help with the upkeep. So even though it's a little pricey, I think it was well worth it. Our tour started at 1230. It ended at four, like full circle round trip. Well worth the money spent. Also, something interesting that they told us was the township that is over where they are, the other houses, when it got the idea of it being turned into a museum, the people around the mu- the, the museum had a bunch of stipulations, mm-hmm. one of which is that they didn't want a bunch of traffic 
And so you have the only way to actually do the tour or to get there is to get on a boat here and sail over there. Yeah. So it was really cool. It's something different, a really, really unique experience. Um, but we're starving. So we're going to go hopefully find something delicious to eat. Delicious, delicious, delicious. Delicious to eat. Delicious. Oh, Lord. So, um, it says, Sipes Extra Pale pre prohibition Pilsner. I don't know if you'll be able to see the label. And they said it's not supposed to be as, like, dark as other Pilsners. Now, if you've watched the vlog previously, you'll know that I don't really like beer, so me trying this is maybe stupid, but we're going to give it a whirl anyway. I hate it less than other beers, <laughs> if that means anything. It is not as dark. It is definitely feels like a a lighter a lighter flavor. I don't know. I don't hate it. It's almost got like a sweet aftertaste, which is not common in other ones. I could get behind that. I like beer more than she does. Yeah, it tastes like beer. It's not bad, though. It's definitely lighter, but I've had something similar, but I can't think of what it is. It's good, though. And just like that, our brief trip to Wisconsin is over. We're flying home uh, tomorrow about noonish. We just pack up tonight, head home tomorrow, and then in three weeks, we'll see you in Hawaii. Aloha.